We have a cluster of the earthquakes uh, at a depth of the one kilometer to around six or seven kilometers. And when we look at the map of the concentration of these earthquakes, uh, we see that they are concentrated in the Reckonus Peninsula and specifically near the uh, Hengil volcanic system. This cluster is at a depth, as I mentioned, of a, a, a mostly around five kilometers. Uh, and uh, the magnitude of them actually is very interesting. They're tiny. Uh, they can be related to uh, a movement of the magma within that uh, area. Of course, uh, this is the volcanic system which is famous. In the past, it had erupted. And when we, we have one eruption, which is currently we have it in the Swartzengi, the pool of the earth uh, crust creates uh, activity in the adjacent volcanic systems. So Swartzengi, when it has eruption, and next we'll have Fegedes field, next maybe we may have the Hengil or Branstein field, and then Hengil, and then goes toward the north. This is a spreading of the earth crust, lithosphere, as you can see, and through that extension, we have the mid-Atlantic ridge, which uh, a microcontinent of the Iceland is actually sitting on the top of it. So it's created this uh, Reckonus Peninsula in that area, adjacent to that microcontinent. And we have one eruption in this area, for example, Swartzengi. The next one also will happen uh, in that just and toward the east area. Most of these are on the um, uh, Eurasian plate. I have a video about this. Please watch this. We have started the day by a series or a cluster of the earthquakes concentrated around the Hengel uh, volcanic system in the Reckonus Peninsula of Iceland. Uh, the depth of most of them is around uh, 5 to 7 kilometers. And they are concentrated around the Hengil area. This is the area I mark it for you now. You can see this. And they are concentrated also on the uh, short period of time. Very sharp concentration you can see there. Almost like a, one of those cases that we had an eruption. It's interesting at this time also, we had one kilometer depth earthquake on the ground zero in the Grindavik. That's the area that we are expecting an eruption any moment, uh, related also to the, uh, another volcanic system called the Sourcing Volcanic System. These are from the uh, movements of the plates and transferring of the movement through the transform fault, those black arrows shows them, through the volcanic system in this uh, Reckonus Peninsula of Iceland. I have a video about the Hengil volcanic system and the importance of it. You please watch this video and remember that this is the area tectonically active. We are seeing land being built. There is a very common mistake according to which in Iceland, we have the boundary between the American plate and uh, Eurasian plate. This is wrong. And why? Because we have another plate, a less known plate, between these two. It's a microplate. It's called Hrapper microplate. This is where we have no earthquakes, no volcanism. Yes, no volcanism. And no tremors of any kind that can actually threaten the life. Of course, this is in the central parts of the Iceland, where the western uh, volcanic zone and the southern volcanic zone come in contact. The triple point of that is bounded what, what we call as Hengil volcanic system. This is a nasty volcanic system, one of the biggest of the sequence of the volcanic systems in the Reckonus Peninsula. It had erupted last time in 2000 years ago, and it has a large lava field. Because it's close to the glacials, it can be potentially explosive. At the moment, it is a source of the geysers, the geothermal uh, you know, uh, fountains of hot springs, as you can see here. And uh, they can erupt to a beautiful height, several hundred meters sometimes. This is because at the depth, the groundwater comes in contact with the uh, rocks which are heated by the magma from the previous eruptions. 
This is practically the lower to the middle part of the Ophiolite system that we know from the Oman, Cyprus, Iran, America, Australia, even Britain. These are the areas that the volcanic eruption happened in the past. Of course, this Reckoness Peninsula has been active over the past few years. We had the Fagerdesfjall, Meridolo, Little Kortor, Sundunka, Hagafell, Grindavik, and again Sunduka too, eruptions happening one after another. These volcanic systems are extending where the earth crust is extending and getting thinner and opening up a way for the magma to rise, to form actually by the melting of the top part of the mantle and rise and erupt as lava. Each volcanic system on its own transfers the movement, the thinning of the ground from one system through this process of badinage, means sausage making. These are like a sausage rolls twisted at certain points, starting from the uh, Atlantic Ocean in the Reckoness Ridge, and then earthquakes transfer through that ridge to the Reckoness Peninsula and through every single volcanic system that we have there, Elfdorf, Swartzengi, Fagadesfjall, Krisovik, Bernesteinfjall, and the last one is Hengil one. And the Hengil after that is, is a triple junction for the south and the western volcanic zones. So transferring of the movements happens there. Hengil is the last in the chain. When the others have erupted, Hengil will be the last one to erupt. And when the others have the tremors and movement, Hengil will be the last one to receive the movement, to accommodate the movement. Otherwise, they practically, they cannot move if they don't accommodate this movement. Hengil is always the last. So in that sense, we can say that this is difficult to move the Hengil. And now the Hengil, we have earthquakes in that area, which is now moving. The transformation of the movement from the Reckoness Ridge to the Reckoness Peninsula is not completed. And as the time goes by, when the Christovic volcanic system is awakening, next is the Bernstein fuel activated, and then the Hengil volcanic system. One by one, they will erupt in the future, over the next decades, probably.